This, this, this is the Michael K Show. You never see a blue comet in that condition. I mean, look at the coaches. Every window still lights up. That train still ran New York to AC, Atlantic City. Be a much different place today. Still, it's nice to think that. Imagine riding in that club car, sipping on a Negroni. They ran the whole set, huh? There's other people interested. Who to go for? Your son will like this too. Looks fast. He don't care. <laughs> This is the Michael K Show. We put in an accident. Old Pump and Station Road. On 98.7 ESPN. Ah, welcome back to the Michael K Show, everybody. Hope you're having a good day. We've had a big show so far. Joe Judge, Brian Gumbel, and now we'll be talking Sopranos. And the Sopranos, uh, talking Sopranos now available and currently climbing the charts with a bullet. See what I did? Top 50 list on Apple Podcast, and there are new episodes every single morning. And the stars of Talking Sopranos, two of the stars of The Sopranos, Michael Imperioli, who played Christopher Moltisanti, and Steve Sharippa, who played Bobby Bacala. And they are nice enough to join us now. Michael and Steve, how you guys doing? Are you staying safe? Yeah, how are you, buddy? How's everything? Yeah, we're doing okay, you know. Hi, Michael. Thanks for having us today. Oh, thanks for coming on, guys. Um... You're both accomplished in what you do, and you've had careers outside The Sopranos, but there are certain actors that get on this dream project, and they know this is as good as it's ever going to get. I'll start with you, Michael. Do you say, no matter what I do in the future, and I could do great things, nothing's going to be better than The Sopranos? Uh, I think I think it would be hard to do something that's going to be as beloved by people. You know, I mean, I've done stuff that, makes me really happy and I enjoy doing and that I'm very engaged in and that's challenging and fun, various movie projects and um, independent stuff that I'm involved in, but that are personal, that I like. But for, for the viewers, probably not. What What is the biggest type of conversation per day when you're doing the podcast? We, we, what we do, we do it. It's every Monday, you know. We have it once a week, and we're doing a rewatch. So we haven't watched the show in 20 years, uh, you know. And we started going back. We were supposed to do it together in the same room, but then once uh, you know the virus hit, you know, Michael's in California. I'm here in New York City, so uh, we're doing it remotely. Uh, you know, they had announced it. We weren't going to do it because we said, well, what's what's going on in the world? Is a TV show? really that important and and if a lot of the fans on social media were contacting us to do it so we we started this is our fifth episode uh, is out this week we do a rewatch from episode one and we're going through the whole 86 episodes you know michael wrote five of them he was there from day one i came on the second episode of second season so uh you know you can watch along with us well, I, I, listen, I'm going to have to now do this again. The timing's frustrating because right before the pandemic, I just finished a complete rewatch, which wow. our, lis- our listeners know because I, I kept bringing it up like it was new because it, 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 I'd forgotten some of these moments that were so important. And Chris, um, Christopher's character, Michael, there's a, there's a part at the very end of this of the run for Christopher, which we, we talk about quite a bit on the show, um, do you think that the the moment when Christopher Moltisante kills his screenwriting friend, I don't hear that get talked about a lot, but doesn't it feel like if the show to, were to continue on, him doing that would have eventually had terrible ramifications? Um, probably. I mean, but listen, everything all these guys are doing has terrible ramifications. And, you know, you know that life eventually ends up very often two ways, you know, I mean, in jail or, 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 or dead. So, uh, you know, I would say, you know, the, the fact that he lived as long as he did was kind of a miracle. The screenwriter or Christopher? Uh, <laughs> Christopher. <laughs> Maybe both. <laughs> now, now, Steve, I'm wondering um, how much stress there was every week when David Chase handed you the script, because obviously all of you wanted to be working in this great show, and it was it was it was a part of the American zeitgeist. How much pressure was it to see if you guys somebody got killed off that week? 
Well, listen, it was absolutely, I mean, I felt it every week. You know, we would get the script at the time we got it FedEx to us. So you would get it, and honestly, you would go to the front, oh, you know, to the front page, you had the whole cast, okay, I'm in this one, and then you would go to the back to see if uh, you got killed off. I mean, you know, it was a real concern. You know, listen, The Sopranos wasn't like friends. I mean, Joey wasn't getting whacked, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, so he probably should have. But, you know, uh, this was a concern year after year, season after season. The more your character became popular, the more your character had stuff to do, uh, the, you know, uh, the, the, you know, it got – the stakes got higher and higher, and it was a good shot you were going to go, you know. Uh, and, and that's what happened. And unfortunately, some of the guys uh, got killed off early, season two, season three, season four. That would have been horrible to me, you know. I mean, I made it to the next to last episode. But, uh, you know, and, and not only were you out of work, but you were part of this amazing thing, you know. Now, when you finally did get knocked off in the second to last episode, was it just FedEx or was it a special delivery by David Chase? Yeah, Chase came and David was very nice. He called me. I happened to be home. I was living in Battery Park City at the time. And he said, uh, where are you? I said, I'm in my apartment. He said, well, I'm on my way over. And he came up. The doorman rang him up and, and uh, I opened the door and uh, he said, I guess you know why I'm here. And it wow. was like a real hit, kind of. <laughs> I said, well, I guess so. And we sat down, and he was very vague about uh, what was going to, you know, happen. And uh, that's uh, how I found out. But you had to be, Steve, I imagine that as time went on, by the time you get really late in the series, the Bobby character evolves so much. Were you pleasantly surprised with how much depth there was to the Bobby character as time went on? Oh, absolutely, because, I, listen, I came on for one episode. I mean, they hired me for one. You know, there was no guarantee of anything. I mean, I did six in the first season, and then slowly uh, he did more and more, and then he, he married the boss's sister, so maybe Bobby wasn't as stupid as everyone thought he was. He's at the right, you know, he's at the right arm of uh, of the boss of the family every Sunday, and on and on. Oh, no, my, my character had an incredible arc, you know. I mean, I, I couldn't have asked for anything more than what they gave me, and I – and I was very flattered, you know, that David and the writers uh, thought enough of me as an actor uh, that they gave me all that material. I want to direct this one to Michael because we're around the same age. But when you, when you watch an episode from 20 years ago, when you're in your early 30s, do you look back at it and go, with all the experience that you've learned and accumulated since then, do you look back and say, I might have done that differently or I might have done that better because I'm so much better an actor now than I was when I was in this episode? Um, well, I already did that the other day when I was watching. The, I did, oh, we watched, let's see, we watched the, the Legend of Tennessee Montesante, which is season one, episode eight or something like that, which I really liked what I did for the most part in that episode. And then I watched The Hit is a Hit, which is either nine or ten. And some of the stuff made me cringe, um, um, which I want to bring up, Steve, next time we tape a podcast and talk about that because it's interesting uh, looking back on stuff. Yeah, I would have done it differently. I don't know because I'm a better actor now or just because uh, in hindsight, you know, everything's easier, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. to, 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 to look at because you're, you're looking at it rather than experiencing it. But, yeah. Now, Michael, I, I'm wondering, uh, uh, both of you. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the, um, a lot of the killings were were really stark, and, and uh, you know, it, it just jolted people that were watching. And, and the one that always, to me, it still resonates is when uh, Adriana goes down. And I mean, it was just, it was brutal. As actors, did you ever watch anything? Go, wow, I, that's too much. I mean, did did that scene affect you, Michael? Um. I think the most disturbing moment of violence in that scene was when Tony was choking uh, Annabella Shore's character, right. Gloria. That, for some reason, was... That and when Ralphie killed, uh, I think her name was Tracy. I forget the... Oh, the, 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 the Ralphie scene outside the club is awful. It's very hard. The, those two were the most uh, disturbing for me, I would say. 
Uh, what, about the, what about when you sat on the dog? That was disturbing. <laughs> I, that wasn't that disturbing. <laughs> I'll be honest. I don't know. I mean, I don't equate that, you know, that with those two. Those two were particularly upsetting because, you know, we knew those characters by, you know, but, you know, uh, well, especially with Gloria's character, we knew it pretty well. I mean, the dog wasn't, um, there were no animals <laughs> now, I think I'm curious to see what you guys did. Richie show up yet, guys? Where you're watching? No, it? no, we're on episode uh, five right now, okay, which so is college, which is a, an incredible episode and kind of turned the series around. You know, that's if you if, if you don't remember, Mike. Uh, he uh, took his daughter to visit colleges, and then oh, yeah. he ran into the snitch, and then he yeah. brutally chokes him. And and uh, as we talked about on the podcast, you know, HBO. Uh, you know, didn't want the the star of a series. It's the first time probably where a star of a series murdered someone. And they said, we're going to lose the audience. And to David Chase's credit, he said, no, if he doesn't kill the guy, he, they're going to lose the audience. Because that's what these guys do. They're brutal mobsters and... That's what the, what happens, and that really turned the whole series. That was a big turning point. It's funny. I'm cu I'm curious to see what you guys feel when when the Richie character shows up. Because during my re rewatch, when Richie April showed up, the the show went from really good and entertaining to having this sort of scary edge to it that it maintained. I thought through a, for a really long time, and I, I thought there were some characters like Richie and Ralphie that brought a certain energy. They have a, a podcast, uh, Talking Sopranos, which you could get on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you have your pa podcast platforms. Now, Steve, I I'm going to direct this to you. Okay. Uh, you, you've, I mean, we've hung out. You know me. Yes. But on this show, my show here, our show, they, they, uh, they say I'm a bad guy because I will occasionally just talk about you getting shot in the train station or uh, train store and, and, and Michael getting killed by, you know, um, Tony choking him out. And they say that I'm spoiling things. And I say, the show hasn't been on in 13 years. How am I spoiling things? How much do I have to wait? Am I a bad guy or a good guy? Well, no, I, I think you're a great guy, Mike. But listen, this is the thing. A whole new generation is watching the show. And, and you know, kids that were too young, kids that are now 18 and 19 in their early 20s, that they were too young. I mean, the show's been off the air 13 years. These kids that were 10 and 12 and couldn't watch it then are watching it now. You know, back then, HBO had 11 million people. Now, between streaming services, HBO Go, Amazon, all this stuff, there's probably more people watching it now than, you know, years ago. So you are spoiling, but yes, hey, bad guy. Thank not you, everybody has seen it, and it's that is why the popularity. I mean, we're talking about a show that ended 13 years ago. And not a day, not a week goes by where someone doesn't mention it in some capacity or another. So you, know? you would advise me not to give away endings anymore? I, I think you have, a, you have a younger audience, sports guys listening, and they probably haven't gone to that yet. Yeah. Steve, well, no, you I could just announce Steve, a spoiler uh, alert, you know, and give him a minute to, like, guys, thank you. Off for guys, he, he soft-shooed he soft that whole thing. Somebody can <laughs> call and complain. Michael, stop with the spoilers. And then they'll spit out five spoilers just to irritate the guy. Yeah. That's, that's bad behavior. That's awful. <laughs> you know, and, and you know what we have coming next Monday? David Chase. Uh, wrote some new dialogue, seriously, for some of the characters, which we're going to read. David gave it to us, which we're going to read Monday about the coronavirus. Oh, really? He's got some new lines for the first time in, thir you know, 13 years. Christopher lines, Bobby lines, oh, Tony I... lines, Carmella lines. David Chase sent it to us to read on the podcast. Oh, that's which awesome. Is, which is absolutely amazing. It really is. Michael, in, in the end, where does the Christopher character land with you? Do you think he's a sympathetic character? That at times I really feel for him, and then in other moments I think he's as bad a guy as there is on the show. Where does he sit with you? Well, I mean, I look at it, uh, uh, you know, I, I, as an actor, you know, you try not to judge the character. So I always ha had a certain amount of affection for him because I, I liked him. Um, he was a very hard worker, you know. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't just expected everything to come to him. Like, he was willing to work for stuff. And, and um, yeah, he was 
kind of a terrible guy at the same time because he was very, you know, he killed people, you know, for his own gain, and he was greedy and like like the rest of those guys, you know, on the show. They all they all were to some extent terrible people at the same time. But there are there were some admirable qualities and likable things. I think from the beginning, when we watched this episode. Uh, Tennessee Moltisante, which is early in the midway in the first season, he talks about how the regular list, regularness of life not being enough for him. I mean, it's really kind of the key to his character and what would happen to him. And really, the beginning, you know, the seeds of drug addiction. You know, I think that's a common thing that a lot of addicts have. You know, that's about escaping from the from you know from life and and, and wanting something on a little higher frequency and, and that. Eventually, it was his undoing in a lot yeah. of ways. Now, Michael and Steve, I know you guys. You guys hang. I, I've seen you at the garden. Uh, is everybody close from the from the cast? Uh, I mean, are most of you guys really tight? Well, you know, everybody. Uh, you know, we don't see them as much as we used to. You know, uh, but yeah, we've all became very good friends. And you know, for all those, you know, eight, nine, ten years, you know, it's like a family. Marriages, divorces, kids being born. We don't see as many people. You know, I don't see as many people as I used to. But show. Sure, well, listen, we have a lot of guests on the show. I mean, we had uh, Jamie Lynn Sigler and and uh, Robert Isler, the kids. Edie Falco's coming on. Uh, we had the casting directors. We had Michael Rispoli, who was one of the finalists to be Tony soprano and as the 86 go on you'll see most of the cast if not all of them you know uh, join us are, are you gonna you have guys my looking forward to the uh, the movie yes i am very much i mean david chase wrote it you know it's gonna be good you know you're not and involved at all both of you right no flashbacks nothing no. like that okay and no. michael i was a fan of yours being a, a huge fan of the movie goodfellas uh, how how fondly do you remember the uh the character of spider well, that experience was um, pretty amazing for me because it was one of the first movies that I was I worked on. I only done a couple of other movies, really small things. I was still, you know, you know, young, and and uh, you know that was kind of a dream to to be with uh, Scorsese and De Niro. I mean, those are two of my you know heroes. You know, growing up, and and when I started pursuing acting, so. I always, you know, have a sports analogy to that. That's like being pulled up from the minors and going to play in the World Series in Yankee Stadium, you know? For me, that's what that was like. Well, the show or the podcast called Talking Sopranos, it's one for every single episode during the Sopranos run. It comes out every Monday, and you could get it on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, other podcast platforms. It's uh, in the top 50 on Apple Podcasts right now, so it's doing very, very well. And I will tell you this, not because they're with us, I've met both of these guys. They are such great, great people. And if they're hosting it, I'm going to bet that it's going to be unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And that's been unbelievable so far. So, Michael and Steve, thank you so much. And, and please, both of you stay safe. Hey, thank you, guys. And be well, really. Thanks for having us. Take thank care. All right, All right. Cheers, thank guys. You, Michael. Take care. You got it. That's Michael Imperioli and Steve Schripp. That's a great idea for a podcast because every single episode has been um, dissected and, and – uh, thought of over and over and over and discussed and when peter rewatched the whole series now the people that were there can tell you what was happening and what, well, what it was like to do that that specific episode it sounds like a great idea well that's what makes it so smart is them cashing in because there are so many other podcasts